today I'm going to give you a little more in-depth look at advanced compression techniques. I typically use Photoshop to do mine, but I was trying to find a more streamlined method to help you guys out and get your set to a better space size considering you only have 381 total megabytes of space to work with. Anyways, I'm going back to a, a rough working folder I had for 213E. I'm going to open up Hacksheet. You can see I have 405 megabytes out of 300 megabytes with 1775 games. I did very minimal work. I did compress the NES games. And as you can see on this here, my original compressed NES games were 64 megabyte, but as soon as you add them in the hack sheet, they uncompress and it took them to 214 megabyte. So by using my compression technique to get them back in there, I gained 150 megabytes back. And I'll show you how I did this, an easy way of doing it. I'm opening up a 216 with nothing in it right now. I'm adding Contra by itself for Nintendo. As you can see here, it just adds it and keeps it compressed. So what I'm going to do to fix this is go into my working folder here with Contra. I'm going to extract it here. Then I'm going to 7-zip it with max. I have the max compression on right now. I'm getting rid of the original one because I don't not need it anymore. This extract it, the seven zip one I did, I'm gonna send that to a zip. So basically when I re-add this into Hackshi, I'm adding this newly seven zipped, then double zipped file in there. And as you can see, it is now seven zipped in the command line. So I have my compression. Now I have to do a couple things to add to this so it actually works with RetroArch. Where it says bin 7-zip with a forward slash, I'm going to get rid of that 7-zip and change it to NES. So it points to the RetroArch NES core. Then I'm going to go to the tail end of it after 7-zip. I'm going to apply a space. Then you have a choice of using either FCEUMM or Nystopia. I'm going to do it with this, uh, FCE UMM, which I like the most. So you want to do a double hyphen, retro arc, space, double hyphen, and you want to choose either Nystopia or FCE UMM. I'm doing an FCE UMM. Now I can actually load this after flashing it'll run perfectly in compressed format. Now I'm going to move on to the next step here with the ping compression. My original ping compression with all the games was 500 megabytes total. I converted it from 32-bit to 8-bit and got that down to 324 megabytes, so I gained 175 megabytes back. I can currently one on to try different color reductions, and I'll show you how this effectively changes with each different conversion. This is the streamlined program that I used, other than Photoshop. I'm going to open up a specific file here. And we're going to go into color settings to actually analyze it. Go on full screen. I'm going to zoom in to give you a slightly better look at it. Right now, this is after a standard conversion from 32-bit to 8-bit. And it's using 256 colors. If you look in the top right here, there's an area of grassy green. And as you downsize it to less and less colors, you actually get to a point where the grass is just gone. It does not have that color anymore. So you could potentially go from 256 to 128. And that's a minimal change where the naked eye would have a little trouble discerning the difference. But if you actually zoomed in, you would definitely know the difference. But going from 128 to 64, 
you lose a little bit more of the luster to the color. It becomes a little more mundane looking. Now I'm going down to 32-bit, and it's starting to look pretty crappy. I'm going down to 16-bit, and you really lose a lot there. And The distortion just keeps going down. I'll we flash with this and we could just save a ton of space. Anyways, I would recommend it most being at 256 to 128 if you want to at least maintain as much integrity as you can. But if you're really fighting for space, you could potentially take it down to 64 and 32 bit and get away with it. Now if you have like a thousand games added, right here you see the grassy green. That's not such a big deal when I get down to 32-bit, but you might open another game and see a drastic difference, which could completely compromise your overall set. So what I would recommend is just sticking with 256 or 128. That would at least ensure that the integrity overall is good and you don't have to go back and do a lot of extra work to try to fix anything you messed up. Anyways, if you do want to use this program you want to actually add the art into there. I'm going to stick with uh, the 256. You want to click output the same directory, let it overwrite. I would recommend making a backup of your folder and using that backup as your working folder. When you're happy with the results, then you could apply that to your current folder. But whatever you choose in color settings, be at 256 or 128, which I would recommend just sticking to those two. When you're done, simply click go and don't touch the program till it's completely done and you'll have a newly saved space. And my results right here are, I went from my original just added into Hatchy with the t standard reduction that it offers, 500 megabytes is what I had. When I did the 256, I went from 324, which gave me 175 gain. Then I tried 128, which gave me another 10 megabyte gain. Then I went to 64, and that gave me another 8 megabyte gain. Then 32, and it gave me another 6 megabyte gain. So as you can see here, you're best off to stick in the 128 or 256 because there's such a, a small gain when you actually start taking away more and more colors that it's not even worth damaging your set. So my total original size with no compressed games, no compressed art, was one gigabyte. I am now currently at 300 megabytes after applying my 256 bit along with my NES and every other system that doesn't compress within Hacksheet setup. So you can knock 700 megabytes off if you just spend a little bit of time doing this. Hope you enjoyed the video.